Hello, what's your name and where are you coming from? My name is Daniel um, Semakula. I come from Uganda. And um, Uganda is part of East Africa, part of Southern Africa, and I'm proud to be here. How are the young people in your country? What are their hopes? What are their dreams? Um, young people in our country, um, to say very okay, their hopes is to find the employment opportunities, employment that provide uh, the best for their future. That's what they expect. What is the entrepreneurship? What the entrepreneurship? What entrepreneurship means to you? Well, entrepreneurship means um, uh, being able to take the lead to find opportunities where they don't exist or where other people ignore is where others find business and to me that is entrepreneurship. You told me about leaders and the fact that a young man should take the lead. What do you think are the values of a leader nowadays? Uh, to me, leadership has different context. But in, in the business context, I think uh, leadership is a, one of the core values is that people should be able to take leasings, uh, stand out where others don't expect you to stand out, uh, being able to, com uh, uh, to be committed to do something that is unique, something that provides opportunity to others. And uh, secondly, also to persevere the challenges and being persistent to the cause. You're definitely a social entrepreneur. What are the advantages of being an entrepreneur and social entrepreneur? Well, to me, the advantages are quite enormous, but most important is that uh, you get the opportunity to define the destiny of your country, where your country will be tomorrow. To contribute to, to the contribute future, to the future of, your country. of your country. That can only be done if you engage yourself in entrepreneurship. But what are the advantages for yourself and what are the advantages for your family? Many young people, many young women and men start their own families and they need support. How is the entrepreneurship an advantage? Well, to myself and to the family, first of all, uh, um, you become the master of your own self. You make the money you want. Uh, you, you, you decide what to do tomorrow. That's first. Then to the family. Entrepreneurship is uh, a fundamental of a good family. Income from different side, incomes from different side. So entrepreneurship at family level is a fundamental thing that keeps a family, a happy family, and a joyous family. What are the core values of Yes Network? The core values that you are sharing. The core values of Yes Network is, uh, one of them to me is engaging young people, bringing them on board, enabling them, empowering them, giving them the chance to participate, equally participate in things that define their future. That's how that makes you feel when you do that? How that makes you feel? By engaging somebody, you bring him at the forefront. You give them the, the chance to speak louder, speak out their mind about tomorrow, and to me that's quite important. If you were here today and um, you would have all the support in the world, sure. where will you be in the next five years? Uh, personally, uh, I have had, now because I've been brought up by YES to this level where I am, I, I think I have a personal view and a personal vision um, where I want to take the Yes campaign to the parliament of my country. Okay, that's a personal view. Then the other view as Yes a whole is that we need to build more facilities for young people to exercise their right to fully engage into entrepreneurship. But at personal level, I think I want to be now the member of parliament so that I can speak louder, I can speak out, I can make laws that promote entrepreneurship in my country. Imagine that you are now in front of the um, parliament of your country. What would be the message that you will give to the young people in your country and to the young people in the world? Imagine that you're a parliamentary now. Well, my argument would be constructive participation. Participate in everything that makes your country a good country to stay in. Most important is that uh, you, don't need to be, you don't need to wait for somebody to come and help you to do something. You need to 
put your hand first so that your country can change to be a better country tomorrow. You are all here in Alexandria, the leaders of the YES Network in the world. You are the whole world here in Egypt, in Alexandria, I think two weeks after the revolutions, few days after the revolution. What are the revolutionary ideas that you get until now from the YES Network and what is the success stories within YES? Well, we have a number of success stories, but coming back to the revolution, I think we have a lot to learn from young people. Um, not only involvement, but I, like I said, constructive involvement. involvement. Um, the youth, the voice of the youth in Egypt was heard louder, okay? And it's quite clear now everywhere that young people are equal partners that can determine how their country can look like tomorrow. With all these mighty power uh, in terms of um, ammunition, it doesn't make sense. What makes more sense now is that the young people can speak louder and people can hear them, and we need to promote that. And in the countries that um, young people are not yet equal partners for the other stakeholders in that country, what would they need? What is their need? What do they have to do in order to become equal partners? Two, two things must be done. Okay. One is that uh, young people have to raise themselves up okay. to understand that they're equal partners. And I'm now talking to them. You have to understand that you're equal partners as young people. You don't need to wait for somebody to come and wake you up. That's one. Learning from what happened in Tunisia, Egypt, and right now in, in Libya, I think people have to understand that young people, you are the right people to determine how your country would look like. And then secondly, um, we need some affirmative action. If, for example, all these world we are having affirmative action on youth employment, and forcing these different companies to employ a quota of, of young people into their companies, I think this uh, revolution might not have actually taken place. But I think we need affirmative action at one level so that they can equally participate in things that uh, make their country a better country. How is the ideal world looking for you? Uh, the ideal world to me is that world where every young person after school can find a good job, after school can find something constructive, something that is worthy the value that somebody has attained from school. So. Uh, precisely a world where young people can find decent work for themselves. And one last question. What do you think is the value that all the young people in the world, no matter what part of the world they are coming from, are sharing? What is that one value that all of you and us young people are sharing? I think we are committed to a better future right now. Take examples where you are in, in Egypt. People are committed to see that the world is a better place to live. That's the value I can see they're sharing. I thank you very much, and I wish you success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice time. <laughs>